Hello everyone and welcome to video 7 in the Flipped Teacher Professional Learning Series. Today's video is based on a question that I was asked by a colleague after watching my most recent video. I've created a learning activity using Google Docs, but how do I get that learning activity out to my students? So today we're going to start to look at a couple of different ways of doing that. We're going to use Google Classroom. So the first thing you need to do is open up your Department of Education portal click on the Google Apps icon. That will bring up this screen. Now we are looking for Google Classroom. Click on that icon and it will load this screen. Now let's have a bit of a quick look around the layout of Google Classroom. The first thing you'll notice is this big gray area here. This is your home screen within Google Class. All of the classes that you teach will be shown here in this format. Class name, the number of students, and the three dots here gives you some options. Up in the top right hand corner will be your email address that you've signed in with. The plus button gives you the ability to either join a class or to create a class. Over on the right hand side, up the top here, this heading tells you which part of Google Classroom you're in. At the moment we're in classes, which you can see because there are the icons of three classes. If I click on the three hyphen uh, menu tab, it opens up my menu. I can go to classes, calendar, so bring up my assignments, or I can use this menu to open up my classes. I also have the ability to look at archived classes, and there's also the settings tab down there. To create a class, we need to click on this plus button here. This gives us the option to join a class or to create a class. First thing you need to do is give the class a name. At the moment, I'm just going to call this test class. Let's go ahead and create our class. Let's have a quick look at the layout of what we're looking at now. Up the top, we have our header. This is a default image, and you can see over here on the right-hand side that we can change what this looks like. That's up to you. Explore that at your own leisure. The three hyphen menu tab brings up our options for classes, calendar, and the other classes we have access to. This is the main area here that we want to be looking at. We have three main tabs, our stream. This is where announcements, assignments, tasks will be posted for our students. The students tab will give you a list of all of the students in your class and about. This will be something about your class. So you can give it a title, you can describe what the class is, where, what, the, what room it's in. This area of Google Class, I would think, is more useful for secondary. We also have the option to add in materials. So if you have something standard that will be used uh, for the whole year, you can add that in here. Let's go back to students. This is where we want to be at the moment because we need our students to get access to this. The first thing we need to do to get our students access to the learning activities that we've created for them is to add them into the class. The easiest way to do that is have your students open up Google Classroom. You want them to add in this code here. So when they log in, they will log in to this screen here. If they click on this plus button, they'll see join class. When they click on that, it will ask for a class code. What they're looking for is this one here. Invite students or give them this code to join. If they enter that code in, uh, they will then have access to this class and all of their names will appear here. Let me show you what that looks like. And I can see here all of the students listed. You can see the email address that they have used to join the class and I also have some other options. I can sort by first name or last name and I can remove, I can email or I can mute whatever they're saying. I also have the option to allow students to do certain things. The way that you set that up will of course depend on how you want your class to function. So students, get them to join by giving them this code. They'll put that code into the join class option and then they'll have access. So now we've got our students enrolled in our class that now have access to the learning activity. This plus button down here in the bottom right hand corner, this gives us a range of options. We can create an announcement, we can create an assignment, we can create a question, or we can reuse a post. But let's look at creating an assignment. So if we click on the plus button, select create assignment, this is the box that comes up. We need to give the assignment a name. So I'm currently teaching my stage three students about note taking. So I'm going to call it that. Description of assignment, that's optional. I do think it's a valuable thing to put in though. Uh, it's gonna call that test for the moment. I can give it a due date and I can be really specific. I can give it a due date and time or just a date. Click on the calendar icon, it brings up the calendar. 
Let's see if this has been due for the 22nd of October. All I do now is click on the 22nd and it's changed it to October 22nd. Time, optional, click on the drop down arrow and I can now go in and I can select when I want that due. Save. The next step, I have four options. I can either upload a file to attach by clicking on the paperclip. I can attach something from Google Drive by clicking on the Google Drive icon. I can add a video from YouTube or I can add in, uh, attach a link to something on the internet. If you're wanting to use Google Docs, to send out a learning activity, you will obviously want to select attach Google Drive item. So let's go ahead and click on Google Drive item. It then brings this option up here, insert files using Google Drive. It is up to you now to find where you have stored that particular learning activity. And this is where your organization of Google Drive will be quite uh, important for ease of access. Uh, I'm just gonna grab a quick document, I'll double click on it, it inserts it in. The next step is also quite important. Over here, click on this drop down arrow, I have three options. Students can view the file, students can edit the file or make a copy for each student. Generally speaking, if it is a, a learning task or it is, is something that the students will be required to interact and to modify, you will want to, to make a copy for each student. What that does is every student that's enrolled in your class will find in the class folder in their Google Drive, they will have a copy of this document for themselves. If you set it to students can edit file, all of your students, let's say you've got 30 in your class, all 30 students will have access to edit that one copy of the document. Generally speaking, you don't want that. You're looking for something from every student, which means you want to make a copy for each student. If it's simply uh, an announcement or some information, an FYI, you can just simply put students can view file. So let's go ahead and click make a copy for each student. So I can now go ahead and either assign the assignment or I can save it as a draft. If you're getting ready for the year or for the term, you can quite easily go in and you can build up a bank of draft assignments. If you know exactly what all of the assignments are going to be, you can go ahead, plan them up, save them as drafts, assign them when it comes time. So let's assign that task. Assigning. It's processing the, the request, done. So now every student will see this announcement in the stream. As a teacher, it tells you over here, number of students that have completed the assignment, number of students that haven't completed the assignment. It tells you that each student will get a copy. That is based on the fact that we selected uh, create a copy for each student. We also have some options up here. The three dots, I can edit, I can delete or as you create more posts, I can move it back to the top. Thank you for watching. I hope this makes sense. Please feel free to rewatch, pause, rewind this video as many times as you need to. I have gone through this process fairly quickly, uh, but we will come back to other options to get your learning activities out to students if you're using Google Drive in the next video. Uh, until then, thanks very much.